this is Austin Collins. Uh, I'm the founder of the Serverless uh, of Serverless Inc. Uh, and I created the Serverless Framework. Um, and we've got David Wells here on the line. Uh, he's our head of community over at Serverless as well. Um, and then we have Austin here who built. Um, well, Austin, maybe you should just take it away and, and talk a bit about yourself, and then and then tell us um, this classic story. Uh, tell us what happened. Well, just a little bit about me. I'm just a web dev in Brisbane at the moment working at a startup called iRecruit. And I went to my first hackathon the other week, which was pretty awesome. And a challenge was put up to build a better census. And because you guys are American, I don't know if you've heard, but um, the Australian census was a massive, massive fail. Well, we um, heard. It, you did hear? Okay, good. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and so the challenge was put up to build it for web scale. And that's something I actually wasn't familiar with doing. Um, so me and Burned, we were just like, sounds fun, learning new tech, even if we don't uh, do it right. Um, and so yeah, over the weekend, we just built it, tested it, and turns out we, we did it. <laughs> what, what, was the, uh, what was the massive fail for, for those watching that don't, don't know the story? What happened with the original census site? It crashed pretty much straight away. The government tried blaming it on DDoS attacks, but they only tested for like one million requests per hour. They didn't go higher than that, and so I'm pretty sure what happened is just a bunch of people went on after dinner and the service fell over. To me, this is like a classic story. Uh, I mean, you hear about this stuff all the time, like the government grossly overpays for some sort of simple solution. Um, it goes totally wrong and crashes. Uh, not even didn't even sound like anything unexpected happened really. Uh, but from from what I've read, it, it, so they they're doing the Australian census, and this happens. How frequently does this happen? Every six years or four years? Uh, every five years, I'm pretty sure. Okay, uh, every five years. Uh, and I what I read was that 16 million Australians were expected to complete the census entirely online. And so they spent over over nine million dollars uh, creating this website so that they can collect the census information. Um, and I also read that they spent over four hundred thousand dollars on load testing alone. So four hundred four hundred grand on just on just mm -hmm. load testing, making sure that it could it could perform at scale. Um, and they said that servers were load tested at one hundred fifty percent of expected usage levels. Um, but all the money um, spent uh, after all the testing done, uh, servers crashed in the evening, and everyone was sort of erroring out when they were trying to complete their information. Um, and as of today, I think the census was, let's see, what day is this? This is the 18th. Uh, the census was, what day was it, Austin? It was like the 8th? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 8th last week, Tuesday. So as of today, um, less than half of all the Australian households have completed the survey. Um, and with this level of turnout, they're saying that the entire effort uh, may be irrelevant because it's just not enough data to draw sort of general um, patterns and stuff from it. But then, so you guys went in and you, you did this hackathon, um, and you guys, how long did it take you to, to recreate it, and um, how much detail did you put into recreating it? Okay. Um... For the front end, just the static pages, I just ripped them straight from the site because I didn't want to waste time on just rebuilding it completely. So, sure. uh, yeah, I just grabbed them and that took probably an hour because I had to get past their code and I won't go into how I did that, but it happened. Uh -huh. And um, then after that, to set up the actual architecture it took me most of Saturday because I'd never touched AWS in my life and so oh, wow. I was feeling my way out. And then on the Sunday, I actually had to redo it on a different AWS account that had credits, mm -hmm. and that took me half an hour. So, yeah, it was pretty great. So what was the total time uh, involved, would you say? Oh, I'd give it, it, I'd give it under 24 hours. I reckon just under 24 hours total work. Uh, under 24 hours, and um, you're totally new to AWS, which is like amazing. Did you guys load test it at all? Did you um, test? Uh, how how'd you do that? Yeah, we did load test. We used um, an open source tool called Goad, which you can find at goad.io, and it uses Lambda functions to smash websites with requests. Um, I'm actually not sure of the specifics, but you can get up to 100k requests per second. 
Was this was this hack bomb focused I, on this problem? Where was everyone trying to? No. Re- okay, it was just your guys' idea. Nice. I like the initiative. Uh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, it was actually our challenge. Like a guy, like our hackathon works, and people pitch their ideas, and then you could work on whatever you wanted. And so, one of the, the one of the guys just got up and was like, "Make it great again." So we decided to do it. Everyone else was just building cool shit with VR and like automatic torrents, face recognition. It's crazy. So you're totally new to AWS. Did you even, did you know about Lambda before before you before you started this project? I'd heard whispers about it. In, during the week, like at work, we because we're, we're going to be using them for auth, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'd heard like a little bit about microservices and all of that, but it was really on Friday night and Saturday where I picked up what ac- what serverless architecture was and all of that. Uh, what are the services that you're using on AWS? Uh, what services did you use to to recreate this? Uh, it's just a, it's a really super basic stuff. Uh, stack, sorry. Um, it's just an S3 bucket. Then it make then one of the pages makes a call to an API gateway, which triggers the Lambda function, which inserts the data into DynamoDB. Just right. easy. Super super simple stuff. And when you um, load tested it, like what was the total cost of of all that? Look, we've put out in the media like five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. but the projected costs on Amazon were looking like under thirty. Wow. wow. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah, the, best part of, the best part about their load testing budget, actually, is it wasn't automatic. They legitimately got people to go on to the site to test it. They didn't just have bots smashing at it. They just got, like, manually did it. And that's probably why it was so expensive. Interesting. Was there any, like, official response to all this, like, media coverage you guys got from the government? Not really. In one of the articles... An ABS spokeswoman said they weren't allowed to comment because of the investigation they had going on. So that's that's the best we're going to get. I Are think. you worried about being deported? <laughs> no, no, not yet, not yet. Come to San Francisco, join us. Oh man, you will be watch out the next here. few years. <laughs> I was reading. Um, I can't remember what the article was, but uh, there were a few good comments uh, underneath the article, and the first one was. Um, someone says that if the stats bureau is clearly totally incapable of building a computer system capable of handling this task, why would anybody believe that they're rock solid guarantees of its total security in handling their data? Right? If they can't put up a website that handles you know this this much load, which isn't really that big of a deal, um, you know how can we know that they're really competent in handling the data? So I thought that was an interesting point. And then of course the other comment was that even more. Unfortunately, this highly publicized failure means e-voting and e-referenda, which would be far cheaper and ultimately better, will be delayed now probably by years or maybe decades. Uh, and I think that's such a great point. Like, unfortunately, um, because of this, everybody's going to have, in government at least, it's highly likely that people are going to get more risk adverse, and they're not going to want to build more elegant, simpler solutions for um, for people who need to comply with government regulations to do certain things, to take a census, uh, to pay taxes and whatnot. And for me, like, there's nothing worse in the world than going to, like, a government website to do something, like the IRS website in the United States, uh, anything that's related to the Department of Motor Vehicles in California. Um, you know, that is just, it's been, it's the worst experience, and it's been that way forever. So, unfortunately, like, the downside of all this stuff is that they're probably going to be more scared to embrace more online efforts and stuff in the future, which is just its just on the wrong side of history, unfortunately. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it does suck. But... How does it feel to have uh, Werner Vogels tweeting about your guy's story, the CTO of Amazon? That was pretty crazy. When I saw that happen, I was like, hey, wait, hang on. <laughs> like, um, yeah, one of the guys who interviewed me said, this guy's kind of a big deal, and he's actually going to come to Brisbane next month, I'm pretty sure. So we might try and have a sit down and just chat about um, what happened. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, That'd yeah. Be pretty cool. He owes you one, man. This is like <laughs> put it on the front page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and it was all over Reddit as well, which was really crazy. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't have any other questions other than like this is a fantastic story, uh, Austin. You're you you rock. I mean, you're clearly going to do lots of cool stuff. I hope that all the traction and interest uh, that's come as a result of this sort of works to your benefit. And um, 
I mean, just just great job all around. Thank you, man. It means a lot, man. It's good, good stuff.